Servus and hello, my name is Fireball313 and welcome to a new episode of Beyond the Game. In this video, I want to give some attention to a book what I purchased some weeks ago. If you guys know me a little bit, then you guys know that I'm a sucker for art design, uh, cover design, stuff like that. That is maybe one of the reasons why I later study uh, graphic design. Already as a young child, I was always captivated by, uh, for example, for, uh, when you buy a video game or when you bought uh, a VCR um, movie something like that and then you had this cover design i i always loved that you know it has always this kind of magic and when i was a child i was drawing um, movie posters by myself or if i would like to program a video game how would the cover look like so i did this already as a child you know with pen and paper uh, later when i got older and when uh, when i had got, got my first pc i started to draw stuff with microsoft paint of course that was if you compare it to the standards of today of course quite ridiculous but hey back then i was already happy to do something in digital form you know um, so art design uh, was always a huge thing for me and um, and a couple of weeks ago when i was browsing on the internet i discovered this book by bitmap books um, and I purchased, I ordered this and I purchased that with, together with another one. Later I will do a video about this also. Um, yeah, and, and I'm really, really satisfied with the product. And this was one of the reasons why I want to make a video about that. Very, very important. This is not a paid promotion in any kind of way. I paid this with my own money. The only thing what I did, I, uh, through email, I had contact with one of the employees of Bitmap Books because I wanted their approval, you know, um, to make a video about that. They gave that to me and they say, just do what you want. Just do a video and, and yeah. And that, that's the only thing. So first, if you go to the bookstore, it's really hard to find uh, this one, at least in Germany and in Holland. If you, want, if you want this, you must really order this through their website uh, and purchase it, and then they will send it with mail. Um, I, this book cost uh, 36 euro, almost the same in dollar. Uh, it is a hardcover book with almost... 400 pages that is so crazy and what is nice also uh, you get a free pdf version of this book um, also what is included in the price uh, yeah so and um, this is the front and it's the game boy box art collection and when you turn it around then you have some text what I would like to read. Whenever you are an old school Game Boy fan or discovering the wonders of Nintendo's million selling portable system for the very first time, we'd like to welcome you to the Game Boy box art collection. A celebration of some of the finest cover artworks for the monochrome marvel that kickstarted the handheld games industry. Looks sounds already really awesome, I must admit, the text. So yeah, and now we take a, a closer look at the book itself. Um, I must really admit for the price, you get a very, very solid book. Feels very high quality, you know, how, how they made this. Um, so for example, even with the paper, it's really good quality of the paper. Um, and soon you will see um, the photos, what they made, and all the box art is really uh, extraordinary, really extraordinary. So for this price, I was really um, surprised how professional it was. And it feels really professional for me also. Here's some kind of, uh, some information about the book. Um, Already the first thing when I when I opened this, I saw this here, and this is so cool. Here you have some basic information: who designed um, uh, the book, and uh, and who made uh, the pictures, uh, the photographer, photographer. I hope this is English. And then you get the content, uh, and I like I like this design. This is so cool, you know, really, really. I would like to have this as a poster or as a wallpaper. I would place this here all over my living room, I must admit. 
<laughs> yeah. So you get a forward from the Game Boy cameraman. Um, and what is quite fascinating, he made a lot of pictures with the Game Boy camera, you know, and the quality, of course, uh, yeah. Uh, because the device is not really like like a cell phone in this case, um, it's more a rare yeah an oddity I must admit, but it's cool. He he tells a little bit about um, the Game Boy and the art design. What is more interesting I think is <clears throat> um, the makers of the book really took um, a huge um, opportunity to give a small history of the Game Boy itself. And, um, and here you can already see the quality of the pictures and, uh, and that is really, really cool, really cool. So and if you don't know, if you want an introduction uh, about the Game Boy and all the hype about that, then I must admit um, this already gives you a good insight about that. And here they celebrate some screenshots from from the original game game boy games back then so for example this is baseball and this is nemesis uh, mega man dr wily's revenge mario and yoshi um, kirby's dreamland yeah this of course for me you know because um, i'm a game boy kid you know i think i was let me think nine years old when the game boy got released this is very nostalgic you know to see that I mean, if you, are, uh, if you are a younger kid and you look at the screenshots, you will say, well, this is green and oh, uh, black and white, you know, this is not full color. How can you play some, how could you play with something like that? Back then, this was awesome for us. Yeah, you had the game, the Sega Game Gear, but that thing was huge handheld and it was eating a lot of batteries. So the Game Boy was really for us, Gamers with, let's say, a small wallet, an uh, approachable, portable device, you know. And we had a lot of fun with that, even with all the restrictions. Yeah, so, yes, still, uh, this is still about the history um, of the Game Boy. Here's the accessory, the Light Boy. And uh, then the Super Game Boy and the Game Boy camera. And then here is a collector's interview that is nice also. Because I must admit, um, I love really physical games and this book celebrates this also, you know. So, and then actually they start already on page 22 with the first games. You have like I said, Japanese games, uh, European games, American games. And that you can already see, these are Japanese games. And the Japanese design of the Game Boy is really, really different compared with the Western version. So if you guys see this design and this design, that was the standard design of the Game Boy games, what we know in the West. But in Japan, it was more like that. And I must admit, many of these games, I don't know, you know, because they are specially made for the Japanese market. Um, some of them came to, to uh, the United States. Um, yeah, but then with a different co cover design and maybe a different name also. Um, what is nice, uh, they place, of course, a name. Then, of uh, course, when this game got released, what kind of game it is, some basic information. Uh, and then some screenshots also. And this is so funny. This game is a horse racing game. Um, I think you can bet on, on horses. And in Japanese, there, Japan, Japan, there's really a market for that. You know, you have PlayStation 2 games and even NES games. Um, what are horse racing games? So, yeah, it's like the train simulation, what they have uh, there. You know, it's, it's a world on its own. So, um, yeah. Um, Aerostar uh, came out even here in the West. This is um, this is a shooter from Vic Tokai. Came out in 1991. Was a, was an awesome title actually. Had a cool special gimmick that um, your ship went on some kind of uh, fly yeah fly over some street you know and you had always to jump from one street to the other. So it was your movement was limited.
So um, that is um, okay. Uh, this is quite fascinating. This is Aku. Uh, sorry about my Japanese, by the way. Aku Maju Dracula Shiko Kutaru Zenzuku Dark Knight, something like that. Um, the, we um, ga we uh, European gamers know this game as Castlevania Legends, I think. Castlevania Legends? Yeah, Castlevania Legends, yeah. That was the last uh, Castlevania title for the original Game Boy. And uh, there was a poor reception of the, on this title, actually, about graphics and gameplay. So this game is not belong not in the canon of the Castlevania universe anymore. This is a game what I played also. Uh, this came out here in the West. This is Kit Dracula. This is a spin-off of Castlevania. Uh, in, yeah, in Japan, it's Aku Maju Special Boku Dracula Kun. And this is a um, yeah, jump and run um, game. And they say even this cute spin-off from the Castlevania series um, sees Dracula's young son Alucard rather than Flood himself, as the Western title of the Kid Dracula implies. Yeah, and then. And this game is, um, if you know Castlevania, you recognize a lot of, lot of stuff, but everything is, in the, everything is uh, made in a cute way. And then you can see this already in the package design. What is more serious design is Alien vs. Predator, the last of his clan. Um, I didn't know actually that there was a Game Boy version of that, because I have the Super Nintendo version in my possession and that is the same artwork, like the Super Nintendo version. And that was a side-scroll beaten up, like Double Dragon Final Fight. It was not a bad title, I mean the Super Nintendo version, but it was not really um, super amazing or something like that. That is interesting for me uh, because I know the original Alleyway, um, what was as um, a launch title in, in Europe, and then it has a different cover design. Animal Breeder, I don't know at all, it's a simulation, but <laughs> for me as a Westerner, if I just look at the cover and I don't understand that, I ask myself, what is it, you know? What is it really? I mean, this cover gives already an explanation what you can expect. That is a breakout clone. But here, this could be anything, you know, jump and run, um, farming simulator, maybe a puzzle game, something like that. Yeah, an animal breeder is a funny name, I must admit. Animaniacs, yeah, if you if you grown up, let's say if you are a young adult um, or teenager in the... In the in, um, mid 90s then you know the animaniacs that is a standard standard standardized um european and yeah um, West, sorry western cover design um yeah looks nice i must admit uh, these games i don't know at all that's an interesting name armored police metal jack it's a strategy game and it's based on uh, on an anime series. This one, <laughs> uh, that was the first uh, Simpsons game on the Game Boy, came out in 1991, and it was a side scroll, jump and run. Um, yeah, it was ridiculous hard, and I just played it because it was The Simpsons, you know, and. Um, what was extraordinary for this title was um, the game really looked at really this, this Simpson feeling. And of course, he had this, this famous theme in the background and the cover design was yeah quite original, you know. So you really saw this is a Simpsons, you know, and this is not a cheap product. This is really a licensed, really a licensed product. Um, interesting thing to know, the game Baseball for the Game Boy, this just came out in Japan and America. We European players never saw this game, unfortunately, because baseball um, is yeah, not so popular here in, in Europe. Unfortunately, we are more football, soccer, stuff like that. So then baseball kits got never released um, here in Europe. What was released was uh, Batman, the video game in 1989, of course, um, 
no, 98, sorry, 98, there was a huge Batman hype with Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson and uh, for a lot of systems, the NES, the Amigas, the Commodore 64, um, you had a lot of Batman games. And this was one of the best, I must really admit. Uh, that was really nice. The graphic was really minimalistic, but I didn't care about that. And the cover design is really, really awesome, cool. I must admit, till now, this um, Batman logo is really the best of the best, you know, the black and the golden and it's glowing a little bit. It has it has a certain um, feel, you know. So this game is really recommended and I, li I like the box, the box design. Um, this is the box design of Batman Forever and if you purchase, for example, the, play, the play, PlayStation 1 version, you had the same uh, aw uh, awful game. Um, yeah, it's, I think even the movie poster looked like that. That game came out in Europe also, Batman Return of the Joker. Yeah, really good uh, Batman title back then. Um, I played it on the NES and yeah, the art design is really, really, really cool. Um, looks really looks like a like a comic. This one I don't know, but this one was a launch title um, here in Europe. And um, back then I didn't knew actually that Balloon Quit was a sequel, of, of, because you had a, a balloon fighter uh, I think on the NES. So uh, I never played this game before. This was my first one. And what is quite fascinating, this um, is the Dutch version, because it says with Dutch uh, manual. So who made these pictures? Um, all these pictures. I think um, he is a Dutch a person from Holland. Battletoads, yeah, cl cl classic design. And I played this one also, was really hard, really hard. Um, the NES version also. This one actually I never played. And Japan titles are really famous for their long names and this is this is a good example bikuri neketsu shin kiroku ne kiroku doko demu kin medal medal so i don't know how to pronounce it sorry about my uh, japanese but yeah for us westerner if we have a, a title like that i think we would run away we have really just small names like Bionic Command or, or like Risen, like Quake, Doom, something like that. Call of Duty, you know, we Western, more for short um, titles. By the way, um, this is Bionic Commando for the Game Boy, the Japanese version. This, of course, everybody knows Sailor Moon, classic design. And even if I, if I don't know any Japanese, I would see immediately, oh, this is a Sailor Moon game. This also. But um, I think they got never released here in the West because the, uh, let me think, the Sailor Moon, Moon hype in at least Germany was around 1995, 96, something like that. Blades of Steel um, is a game what, what we got also on the NES and on the Game Boy. And this uh, design is the same like uh, on the NES. It's a basic hockey game. Um, yeah. Um, if I remember, yes, it has this game link function so you could play this together uh, with a friend. That was, of course, always, always fun. This um, art design, I must admit, if I would not knew that it's Bomberman, it looks a little bit like American football, like a futuristic version of American football. Um, but this is Bomber Boy, um, made from Hudson, came out in 1990 and was the first Bomberman game on the Game Boy. What is quite fascinating also, I didn't knew that. Um, you had some packages in Japan, they came in a tiny con uh, container. And for example, the Bomberman collection was uh, looked like that. And it was even Super Game Boy compatible. I didn't knew that. And I can imagine this has a certain collector's value. So, and you guys see already, there's a lot of Bomberman games on the Game Boy. And this is quite interesting. Here, is, is this um, a tin? Yeah, I think this is just a standard. So this is just a standard package and this comes with the metal tin again. 
yeah, this is a classic title. Um, what I played a lot on the Commodore uh, 64, uh, Boulder Dash, yeah. Um, and this is Bubble Bobble, of course, classic title from Taito. I must admit, I, this art design reminds me immediately of the arcade version. Um, one of the one of the launch title what I had from for the Game Boy was Bra Fighter Deluxe. Uh, the package design for for the Western market was different, completely different. Then you had some kind of um, small little guy, flying guy with a jetpack and a dragon, something like that. This is more a mecha style. I must admit, this looks way cooler than the Western version. This is quite interesting. Capcom Quiz. I don't know about this game. He looks a little bit uh, bored, I think. But um, before I forget it, what I must mention is the design of the book, how they do that, you know, the title, the explanation, then the, then the box art, and here the um, screenshots, that is really nice. Really, it is nice to look at. It is not crowded, it doesn't give you any kind of headache, everything is structured. Uh, really, really good design. So, thumbs up. Shoplifter free. I played this one back then on the Super Nintendo, I think. And here you can see again um, that this is the um, Dutch version because it says with Dutch um, manual. And actually it's the same. If you would bought this in Germany, it would say it with German manual. This box art is quite interesting because this is um, Contra Spirits. Uh, this is the Japanese version. And um, this was made by Factor 5. This was a, a German company. And we, Western player, know this game as Probotector. And with Cutthroat Island, they, <clears throat> what they used for the box art was the, um, uh, the poster of the movie. And it has this epic feel. The game itself is not really, really good. Um, but if you look at the, at the package, at the design, you would imagine that you would think this is some kind of cinematic platformer, something like that. This game I, I played a lot, David Crane, The Rescue of Princess Boblet, uh, starring A Boy and His Blob. That is the second part of A Boy and His Blob. The first one was um, uh, for the NES. And when you look, uh, when you look um, on, on the design of the NES version, it had more this comic feel. This more has a mystery look. Um, it's a little bit different. But I must admit, back then, I loved the game design, you know, that you have this blob and with the certain jellies, uh, what you have at your disposal, the blob changes form like a, like a leather, like a hole, like a key and an, an umbrella, stuff like that. Yeah, that was quite innovative back then. These games, unfortunately, never got released uh, here in, uh, in Europe. So this is basically, this is a Samurai Showdown, and this is King of Fighters. Yeah, Desert Strike, that was, that was a Western release. I never played this, actually. I heard a lot about that, uh, never played that. was made by Electronic Arts. Dino Breeder, that is a, that is a funny artwork also. Um, it's a simulation. I don't know this at all. Looks a little bit like a Pokemon game. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, here you have two games what came out, of course, here in Europe also, because this is Aladdin and this is DuckTales. I have this one. Um, back then, in the in the early 90s, uh, DuckTales had their own um, cartoon, uh, not cartoon, an animate series. Yeah, and it was quite popular. And I had this game on the, oh, I still have this game uh, even on the NES. Uh, really, really cool jump and run. Yeah, and the cover design is iconic. Yeah. This, this one has a quite a collector's value, what I know. This is the Donkey Kong game, what came out in 1994. That was one of the first game what was compatible with the Super Game Boy. Um, the design reminds me of the original arcade version of Donkey Kong. And this is really cool because our we Westerner, uh, we Western people, I mean, sorry, for the Western market, there was a different cover design, unfortunately. And these are and the covers of the Donkey Kong Land. And here they went, went of course, with the pre... Um, how do you call this? Uh, with this pre-rendered look. That was, of course, in the mid-90s, a huge thing. I don't have so often, I don't have so much uh, Japanese games in my collection because, like I said, it was quite hard to, to find import. This one um, I have in my collection, that is the first Double Dragon. Yeah, really, really good beaten up. Unfortunately, you don't have uh, two player capabilities, so you just play this by yourself. But compared to the Western version, this one is more serious, more threatening. And compared to the third one, it's really, really different. I mean, this game is really awful, really awful. A friend of mine had this one and I borrowed this and I was expecting the same um, good gameplay like the first game and whoa, I got really disappointed, really disappointed. <laughs> This is an um, interesting design um, because this is Dr. Mario, a puzzle game, what came out in 1990. We played this a lot. Uh, the Western version looked completely different like that. You know, this has more a cutie um, feel, I think. And uh, our version was more s s serious. And this is, this is so cool. This is uh, the Castlevania adventure. This is a Japanese version. Looks way more taunting, way more like, like a horror movie. Um, and this is the second part. Um, Simon's, nay, Be uh, Belmont's Revenge, yes. These two games are really have awesome Game Boy soundtrack. And then, of course, Earthworm Jim for the Game Boy. And here again, Dragon Slayer, and you can see it's, um, they say, um, with Dutch um, manual. And uh, I must admit, I love this art design. This really looks like, I don't know how, how to explain this in English. It's, it, it's, it is hand-drawn, you know, and it has this... Um, it gives the sense of speed, you know, this epic sense of speed. Uh, and this is a Japanese version of uh, F1 race. Um, I showed this, I think, in one of my videos, the package design. This is, I must admit, I love this more because it has this cutie, cutie look, you know. All the race cars look really so small, so more cartoonish, you know, more yeah, super deformed, yes. So um, looks really nice, and of course this game is famous because you you could you could play this with four people back then. Yeah, this is Final Fantasy Legend Two. This looks so awesome, you know. Uh, and this is a good example of that a simple design is sometimes the best, you know, because even if you just have the the, the name and uh, just this artwork, it, it looks so legendary, it looks so epic, yeah, really, really cool. A 
should ask Goman is that uh, is that um, I don't know I, I don't know if we had this I know some Goman games came uh, out on the Super Nintendo but I don't know if we had this um, as a Game Boy version and this one is one of my most favorite Game Boy games ever Gargoyles Quest awesome awesome soundtrack you know and the gameplay I was really captivated by the gameplay um, yeah I would like to see uh, a, re a remaster or maybe a reimagination of this one. So it's a so cool game. I played this for weeks and the cover design is, even if it's a little bit cartoonish, uh, it's for me really epic. Yeah, this is Gauntlet 2. Um, <clears throat> I think this is, um, I be no, I believe this is the um, Arcade design. And uh, Ghostbusters 2, yeah. <laughs> I must admit I was not a huge Ghostbuster fan. And the Ghostbuster games, what we had here in the West, was mostly just crap. <laughs> Interesting fact: this is um, this was a launch title in here in in the West, and Mario was the main protagonist actually here in this version. The Japanese version was a little bit different, and they mentioned this even here. But I must admit, um, with this game, my love for the sport started to grow, you know, because it was one of the first games who had uh, safe cap capabilities. Uh, that was for me groundbreaking back then in 1989. And that is interesting design also. It reminds me a little bit of the 80s. What is it? Hetris. And I think it's a puzzle puzzle game. Bulletproof Software, the makers of the original uh, Tetris for the Game Boy. And this is Fist of the North Star, um, famous in Japan. There, there it's called Hokutu no Ken. I hope I pronounce it correctly. Yeah, and here this is hey, and this um, cover design is really cool. Reminds me of the anime and the manga. And here is the first Kirby. Interesting fact, Kirby was, um, of course, pink, but in the Western release, uh, you see Kirby was white because um, I think um, Nintendo of Europe thought that Kirby must be white and they printed already all the packages. And so, and they shipped it already out, you know, to the market. So there was no chance to change his color. So in the first version for us Westerner was Kirby white. And later for the NES version, they changed, of course, the color. I believe this is Ikari Warrior, I think. Oh, it released in the West under the title Fortify Zone. This looks really like, um, like an 80s movie. A little bit Rambo style. <laughs> this is... Um, Interesting design, really interesting the design. Very, very Japanese. And uh, when I look at this, this reminds me um, of the 80s. Even the game came out in 1995. Um, this is so 80s with um, with the um, with the fonts, with the color scheme, the whole design, really, it, it, it screams 80s for me. But unfortunately, I, I never played this one. Jimmy Commerce Pro Tennis 2. I know there's a Super Nintendo version, and this has a more serious um, cover design. This is more cartoonish. Yeah, yeah something like that. Um, this is this is interesting also. <laughs> they looked a little bit depressed. For me as a Westerner, if I don't know how to read that, uh, the, um, the design gives a lot of question. What is it? Is this an action title? Is this a platformer? I think this is something like um, like sn snake. 
Yeah, it even says um, that it's something like snake. Yeah, that is a killer instinct. Everybody knows this game. Um, I have the Super Nintendo version and the Game Boy version also. It's a shame. I would, um, I if I would be the, the designer of this package, I would uh, place the whole um, the whole fighters in front of it, you know, to represent more the game. This game, Kirby No Ki Kira Kira Kids, is um, we Westerner know this game as Kirby Star Stacker. Uh, it's a puzzle game, uh, really good one, addictive one. Um, yeah, and this box art looks looks cool. This is Kirby No Pinball. Um, here we know it as Kirby's Pinball Land. Yeah, awesome pinball game. I recommend that one. Yeah, and this looks really early 90s rendering graphics, you know, uh, clacks. And here you can see immediately, even if you don't know what, what, what it means, what you can expect from the game. That is at least a puzzle game, something like that, a futuristic puzzle game. <laughs> yeah, the Game Boy, Konami Game Boy Collection came out in. Um, in the West also. Uh, and then you had four games, I think. Uh, Gradius, um, Probotector, Castlevania, NF1, Spirit, yes. A friend of mine had this, this game. Um, yeah, side scroll, um, jump and run. Yeah, and I have this one, um, Quirk. Um, it's quite an um, iconic um, design, reminds me of the 80s also. It's a push and pull a puzzle game. You have boxes and walls, what you need to pull and to push. Uh, quite simple game, but, and, but very addictive. Wow, I, I actually I never knew that Magical Knight Ray Earth had a Game Boy version. Wow. Because I know the anime. Another thing what I didn't knew is that um, Gargoyle's Quest had a second part on the Game Boy. This was never released uh, here in the West, unfortunately. And that is the cover design. Looks really awesome. Reminds me of uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, and this Marble Madness. If you're a kid of the early 90s, then you know this. This game um, was developed by Mark uh, Cerny, who later was the lead architect of the PlayStation 4. Um, it's a good um, version of Marble Madness. And if you have the, if you see the, for example, if you look at the cover from the NES version, it's the same like this one. Yeah, Mario and Yoshi, a good puzzle game, very addictive. And that is Mario Picross. I played this, but till now, for me, I have no clue how to play this game. I'm really too stupid for that, maybe. Because these numbers give you explanations where, where you need to dig and, and, and to ma make the marks and all that stuff. Until now, I don't understand that game gameplay. It's, maybe I'm really just stupid. <laughs> yeah, hey. My first, my first uh, Mega Man game on the Game Boy. Classic design, um, really awesome. Yeah, what can I say? Um, I love this one. So, um, yeah. This also, this, this was my first Metroid uh, game. Later I played um, the NES version. But this design is iconic also. I had this as a kid um, because this is the official artwork. They used this even in the official Nintendo magazine. I had a poster of this one, really big, you know, and I had this uh, at my wall. Yeah, looks really, really cool. And it was a good game also, of course. Mickey Mouse 2, uh, we Western player know this at, at, as Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle 2. Yeah, 
micro machines. I don't know. I think uh, no. You just you just could play this with two players, not with four. Back then, micro machines games was really really f good racers. I don't know this one. This is fascinating also. I mean, we Westerner, we got Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 just separately, you know, on the Game Boy, really horrible games. Um, here in Japan, they have the first and the second together on one cartridge. This was an addictive uh, fun racer, Motocross Maniac. Um, I borrowed this from a friend uh, in my class back then and I was playing it for a long time. Really crazy and so simple, simple game, you know. You just drive from, from the left to the right, you must do some crazy jumps, you must collect some letters and nitro and you must finish just the race. NBA Jam. And if you if you choose if you look at the Mega Drive version, I mean if the, the box design, the Mega Drive version, the N uh, Super Nintendo version, and here even the Game Boy version, they look all the same. And this is not bad in, in any kind of mean. Huh? Yeah, um, both these games I have, uh, Nemesis. Um, this technically is, this is Gradius, um, was a really awesome game. But if you are, let's say, if you are good in, in a shooter, you can finish this in something like 20 minutes. There's another example. If, uh, if I look at the box art, I ask myself, what is it? It looks like a, some kind of photo game. Yeah, Odd World Adventures. I must admit, I played the first one on the PlayStation. It was a huge success back then, and, and many people played that, but it was not my kind of, of thing, so I never played the Game Boy version also. What I played a lot uh, was uh, Pac-Man back then. It was quite a good Akata port um, on the Game Boy. And I must admit, the art design looks way better than the Western, Western version, yes has more this arcade feel. Uh, I don't know this one. Fascinating. Yeah, Paperboy. Um, I think every everybody from the 80s uh, played Paperboy in one form on the Commodore, on Amiga, the NES, um, yeah. I don't know this one. <laughs> Penguin Kun Wars versus. Interesting. Pinball Dreams, yes. I played um, this version on the Amiga back then in the early 90s. And this game was designed by uh, the makers of Battlefield. Really interesting. And another example that you had this uh, tin again, you know, with bomb uh, with a bomberman game. Um, interesting. This is um, Pokemon Yellow, and this is Pokemon Green, Green something like that. Um, yeah, the green version. The Japanese design is more crazy than the western version you know the western version is quite solid you know it's not so irritating it's not so much information in front of the cover like here and this is really one awesome art design you know this is a baseball game um, we i think we never had this here in the west and the baseball is the game boy you know really cool really cool artwork quite creative i must admit see a good example here about the box design here this is pokemon the blue version wait uh, i mean look at that uh, and then this is more clean this is more western design you you just see that you know
This one I played a lot on the Amiga. Um, I mean, I never, I never had an Amiga. A friend of mine had one. And this is a God Simulator. And here you can see again, this is the Dutch version. Yeah, Primal Rage. Um, the cover design, of course, is iconic and everybody was crazy about Primal Rage. I mean, uh, that was in the hype of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter and you fight as a dinosaur, other dinosaurs, and you could pee uh, on, on your opponents and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I must admit uh, that was not my kind of fighting game. Yeah, this is this is so awesome. Pro Protector 2. This is um, the Game Boy version of Contra 4, no, Contra 3, The Alien Wars. Um, because of um, censorship, we don't have, we just had this kind of robots for the Western market. And I got used, so used to that, actually. For me, this is always a thing. When I play now a Contra game, then you have these Rambo characters. Uh, it's really hard for me to get used to because I'm, I'm, I like the robots more. I don't know, it, it fit for me because I was grown up uh, with them. And this, wait, wait, before, before I forget it, I think this was um, designed by um, Factor 5 also, I think. Hubert, of course. Quicks, that is a game that came out um, in Europe also, but with a different um, cover design. And what was an innovative puzzle shooter back then uh, was a launch title for us also for us also that was Quarf. You had a tiny little spaceship and you shoot blocks in front of that and you have to, to fill up these blocks. Um, I, I really like that. Some kind of hidden gem. Yeah, and here R-Type, one of the greatest shooter of all. Um, awesome cover design, really. Looks more epic than the, um, the European one. And here's a, the second one. I don't know this game. Oh yeah, I remember that one actually. I think for because somebody recommended me to play this. Um, I played this, I think, 10 years ago, something like that. Um, yeah, it's um, how you call it, how you call this? Um, you destroy some ships, you know, on the, on the play field. We played this in school with pen and paper. I don't know the English um, battleship, I think, is the English word for that. A couple of Ranma games. And what is quite iconic also is Robocop. This is the movie poster, I believe. Yeah, looks cool. The only thing what um, bothers me is the big ocean logo here in front of it, you know. If they had it a little bit smaller, then it would look nicer, I think. Yeah, and then here, the Mega Man games. For people who don't know that, uh, Mega Man for us is Rock Man in Japan. And the cover design compared with the Western version is more, more anime, uh, anime style, manga style. Yeah, and I like this more, I must admit. And Mega Man 5 was quite a revelation back then. It came out very late in the lifespan of the Game Boy. It was, um, it, play it was so different compared with the rest of them. And it had a really good storyline for a Mega Man title. I don't know these ones. Looks interesting. Looks like a fighting game. Yeah fighting game. A little bit like a Samurai Showdown. Oh yeah, find this is Saiken Denetsu Final Fantasy Gaiden. This is a prime example um, of the way how Nintendo handled their products. In Japan it was 
famous under this name. We in America, they know this as Final Fantasy Adventure and we European know this game as Mystic Quest. Uh, so um, there's a lot of confusion actually, you know, yeah. Yeah, that was a launch title back then also, Skate or Die. And the package gave already a good uh, impression what you can expect. This is not a skateboard, traditional skateboard game like Tony Hawk or something. It is more like a, like a platformer, really. You're just on your skateboard and you have top-down perspective and you must avoid obstacles, stuff like that, and side-scrolling levels. A really, really hard one. It's a Dutch version also, here also, yeah. And this is one really, really classic title for, for the Game Boy Solar Striker. Um, one of the, I don't know why, this is a, it's a basic uh, shooter. It's made by Nintendo and was a launch title for us. Uh, Till now, I really still, always, I oh, sometimes I really have to, no, not sometimes, how to say, um, at least, I don't know, two times, three times a year, I take this, I pop this game in my Game Boy and I just play it because it's so much fun, you know? Really awesome game. I mean, the graphics are primitive, but the gameplay and the soundtrack is still awesome. Oh, this is interesting. This was my Christmas present, Spartan X. We Westerner know this game as uh, Kung Fu Master, I think. Um, yeah. That's what was really a big disappointment for me. I got this for Christmas from my par parents. Um, I played this and after 20 minutes, I just finished it on the hardest difficulty. That was really a disappointment. I mean, nice side scroll, beat them up, but um, yeah, way too easy. That looks cool, really like, like, like a comic. Star Wars, and that is an iconic um, image also. I don't know this one. Yeah, and with the design of Street Fighter, they had some kind of continuity because the package of the original Street Fighter for the Super Nintendo had the same image. So, um, yeah, and it is... I mean, this game has some limitations, um, but it was for the time a good port of Street Fighter 2. <clears throat> it's fascinating also for me, fishing game for the Game Boy. My father, was his biggest hobby was always fishing. And um, I don't know, I never tried to give him a, a, ga um, a game, you know, a, a simulation, a fishing simulation. I would be... Um, yeah, would be actually quite interesting to know how he, how he would react on these kind of games. Super Chinese land. I don't know this. Crazy. Yeah, Donkey Kong, Super Donkey Kong GB um, is a port of Donkey Kong Country. A good port. Yeah, in kickoff, um, I played this back on the Amiga. And here, wow, and this is so awesome. Uh, this is a cover of uh, Super Mario Land. Um, yeah, I, I, till this day, I really love this game. And we had the same cover art also, here, here too. Um, just in the Western design. Awesome Mario games. Yeah, and I remember this one. This um, had uh, four player capabilities, yeah. Um, Really nice. Yeah, Return of the Jedi. I had this as a kid. I mean, the poster um, at my in my uh, living room. Tamagotchi, yeah. A friend of mine was a, a huge turtle fan, and um, and had he had this both these games, 
quite fascinating, um, actually. Back then, the graphics was uh, really, really good for the time. But the third part I, I never played, actually. This looks interesting. I like the design. It's quite simple, but epic at the same time. And it's a scrolling shooter. Okay. Was the launch title here? Tennis. Yeah, very simple game. Um, Mario was a referee, I remember. Yeah. And I must admit, this is one of the greatest box design ever. I mean, I'm a huge Terminator fan. And um, just because of this box design, I bought the Game Boy version. I mean, it's a really bad game. It's ridiculous hard, really ridiculous hard. Uh, but the box design is so fucking epic, really. It looks so threatening, it looks so um, awesome, yeah. And that I even didn't know. I mean, uh, this is the package design of Tetris in Japan. We Westerners had the Tetris, of course, already together with the Game Boy. Later they released a version, a standard version of Tetris, separate version. But I don't remember the package design. But this looks quite fascinating. This had a friend of mine, and I love this design as also. This is so cool. Um, this hand-drawn design really gives you this feel, you play um, a comic. And it was a, a good um, Spider-Man game, yeah. This was the, is the Game Boy port of the Battle of Olympus. I saw this game, I remember, in, um, not, not a game store, it was in a toy store, um, that was before I had a Game Boy for the NES version, and just the package design uh, is so epic. And I didn't know what, what, what was it about, but I just wanted to have it because the package design was so crazy. Yeah, the lawn mower man, they go for the pre-rendered uh, look. Looks a little bit creepy, I must admit. Back then, I think in the early 90s, this was a huge hype about virtual reality, stuff like that. The Legend of Princess Valiant. I don't know this one. Huh. Yeah, Chess Master. Everybody knows that. You had this on the NES, on the Game Boy, I think on the N Nintendo 64. Yes, and I have this one in my collection. Really classic, classic design also. And back then, I think I was, I don't know, 12 years, 13 years old, when Tiny Toons came out. Um, I enjoyed it, the show. And um, yeah, and the games for the Super Nintendo and for the Mega Drive and the Game Boy are really solid uh, jump and runs. True Lies. I saw this, I remember I saw this movie back in the theater. It was a really funny one. I never played the games. 360 degrees of firing power. Woohoo. Okay. The Trump Collection GB. I hope they don't they don't mention um, I mean they don't mention Donald Trump in this case. What the fuck? Wait, Trump boy. Okay. I think it's some kind of gambling game, card game. It's poker, I, I believe. That looks really crazy. Yeah, that is Tour Rock. Even if I if I can read that, you know, because of this, um, the the aim design you can you see, and then the dinosaur you you notice immediately. This is Tour Rock. Yeah, and we had this even here in, in the West, but with a different cover design. But this looks really really cool. Wow, that is awesome also. That is, has some kind of mystical feel. Twin, I don't know. I don't know this game. <laughs> yeah, Universal Soldier, I remember this game. And even the movie with Dolph Rundgren and um, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Whoa. A little bit cheap Terminator uh, movie. 
And I believe I'm, I don't know, um, I think the game was designed by Factor 5. Something like that. Yeah, right. I, I, I was right. Because this is a port of Turrican 2. They just replaced um, the protagonist with one of the characters and they changed the name. And yeah, that was technically Turrican 2. Huh? Yeah, wave race. And that is quite fascinating. In I think in 2000, 2001, I discovered by, uh, by coincidence that wave race was, came first on the Game Boy. Because, like everybody else, uh, we thought wave race 64 is the first game. Um, no, actually, that one is the first one. And you can play this with four players. Um, because I was curious, I couldn't find it anywhere to buy, I played the emulated version. And you have a top-down perspective. Uh, it's a solid racer. Of course, it's not like you can compare it with Wave Race 64. But for the Game Boy, it's okay. Oh, yeah, Wizardry, that is nice artwork. Simple and epic. The first episode, Suffering of the Queen. Nice. I would buy this just or only because of the cover. Yeah, and <laughs> and I bought this one just because of the design, because it 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 look it looks so um, Conan style, like really an epic adventure. Yeah, I didn't knew back then that this is a side scroll jump and run with some action sequences, quite hard. Um, has a nice soundtrack, but yeah. I was disappointed uh, with the game, I must admit, but the, the design is just epic. Yeah, and these two I have, these two versions. Um, the Super Nintendo version looks exactly like that. Um, not really good um, wrestling games, unfortunately. Yeah, but... Uh, if you if you want to choose if you want to have if you need a Game Boy game for the Game Boy uh, sorry a wrestling game for the Game Boy then you must go with WWF Superstars that is the best all of them yeah and a big feature with the second part was that you could play uh, in the steel cage and uh, you have tag team action but the gameplay was really horrendous. <laughs> that looks cute. Yeah, and that is uh, The Legend of Zelda's Link's Awakening. We have um, the same um, card um, artwork design, but with a different package. Um, I remember when I bought this because I was so captivated um, by um, the Super Nintendo version of uh, The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, uh, when this came out, I bought that immediately. And I had the poster of it uh, in my sleeping room. <laughs> yeah, and then we are already at the end of this book. Um, here's the index about um, all the titles and some basic information. And that is the Game Boy box art collection from Bitmap Books. I must really admit this is an awesome book. I think uh, for 36 uh, euro you get a lot of value, extra PDF version also. The quality of this book is really awesome. I'm so happy about that. And uh, I purchased another book also. Uh, I will do um, a video about that in the future. Um, yeah. The question is, uh, can I recommend that? Yes, completely. I mean, if you love art style of box art, if you want to know a little bit about the Game Boy history, then this book is for you, you know. Um, yeah, they put a lot of effort, a lot of time and love in this, and you really feel and see that. So for me, it's really a thumbs up. Um, it's not so often that I'm really so positive about a product, but in this case, really, this is this is really crazy. And I can't wait to make a video about uh, the second book, what I purchased from their websites. Yeah, uh, and that's it with this video. If you guys like my content, give me a thumbs up. Uh, 
and subscribe if you want to leave a comment i would like to be uh, i would be happy about that also see you next time and don't forget guys to support your local video game store servus <laughs>